What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Yes, I'm still alive. As most of you saw, I did come down with the Rona. But to be honest, I, I think I beat it fairly quickly. I think I was done in like three or four-ish days, so it really wasn't a huge deal. Three out of 10, need a better plague next time. But I'm not out of the woods yet, because I have to react to a video that you guys have been flooding my DMs with ever since it came out. It was a new video from Forgotten Weapons called The Worst AK I Have Ever Seen. Of course, I watched it immediately. And true to the video's name, um, yeah, that is probably one of the worst AKs I have ever seen. But as soon as it was posted, you guys flooded my comments, you flooded all of, like on Instagram and everything, just asking me to react to this video. So, <sighs> here we go. Ah, but first, crack a white claw. I'm now pretty sure this is the be all end all cure to the Rona. Either that or the Rona just hits AK guys differently. Huh. Maybe if you just pickle all of your internal organs first, the virus has nothing to latch onto. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking about that before we lose all of our monetization. Speaking of not having monetization, I just wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, Sportsman's Guide. They've been a huge supporter of the channel in the past. They really helped us out on a couple of occasions because they're, let's face it, willing to sponsor the channel. But they're a great resource for all sorts of outdoorsy stuff like guns, ammunition, military surplus, Guns, ammunition, got some kind of cool stuff coming up with Sportsman's Guide here in the future. I'm excited to continue to partner with them. If you want to check them out, go ahead and check the link in the description and or the pinned comment where you can go ahead and check out the site. Take care of the guys that take care of us. So anyways, I'm done procrastinating. Let's go. This rifle first came to my attention when someone decided to try firing it. Where I was watching, and the entire gas block assembly went down range. Yeah, that's not good. That's supposed to be attached. I think the most horrific example of gunsmithing I have ever seen in my life. Let me show you. By outward appearances, this is a 5.56 millimeter version of an AKS 47U Krinkov. All right, so right off the bat, you can already tell some shit's not right with this gun from the pancake rivets to that massive gap in the furniture. Uh, the lack of pins holding the front sight gas block combo on, which clearly uh, rocket manned off the front of the fucking gun. But what really hurts is that as bad as this is about to get, this parts kit is an actual crank parts kit. The the dust cover, the the rear sight block, hinge block, uh, the combo block. You could, you could tell this is this is a real crank kit that somebody for whatever reason chambered in five five six. But those kits are not cheap. These kits go for like two grand uh, when you can find them. These are these are really expensive kits. So for somebody to butcher this one in particular hurts me worse than a traditionally fucked AK. All right, I'm sorry, I'm done interrupting. Take it away, gun Jesus. The first bad sign, Pro Mag. No Next comment. Up, they didn't bother to install the latch that holds the stock. That's supposed to be the rivet hole for it. So close. It's not a. It's not a rivet necessarily. It's a. Uh, it's a little small pin. I wish I had my crank with me. I show you guys. Uh, but it's. It's a little pin that retains. Uh, there's a little wire spring that holds the latch in place. That that grabs that uh, stock when it folds. It pins through the bottom of the receiver and actually goes into a hole at the very bottom of the front trunnion that is there to kind of retain it. Unless you don't fucking have one, in which case you know, perfect. That's supposed to be a little catch to hold the stock in place, but. That's really the least of this thing's problems. Rivets. Rivets Whoa. are supposed to look. That's nice. Those rivets look like somebody just dropped a little bit of just melted solder into the holes where the rivets were supposed to be. That's impressively bad. More or less like this. This is not a proper rivet. This is definitely not a proper rivet. That's more like a pin. On this side, we're really no better. This is just useless and horrible. Uh, this one looks kind of like a nail, and that one's actually, like, that's good. That means there's one rivet on this side, at least, that's going to hold the rear trunnion in place. Uh, not quite. Sorry, Ian. So there are multiple different kind of rivets on an AK. Uh, you know, you've got the short rivets, you've got the long rivets, you've got the swell neck rivets, the non-swell neck rivets. The one he's talking about right there is the top rivet on the rear trunnion of a, uh, I think, a 4.5 millimeter side bolt. It really doesn't matter. 4.5 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, it's the same thing um, in regards to the rivets. The short rivets on an AK don't go all the way through. So it just little, it, it pops out uh, maybe like half an inch and then you crush it and then it crushes that piece of the trunnion to the receiver. 
and you know you got a nice form dome on one side and then the crushed flat on the other that one that he's pointing out in particular unfortunately is a long rivet which means it goes all the way through the gun uh, so it starts on one side and there's just like a, a uh, drilled hole that goes through the entire trunnion and out the other side and uh, so it goes through the receiver in both places and then you crush the other side and usually you either uh, crush it completely flat like the modern 100 series style or you cup it and uh, so you have two good form domes on both sides or at least that's the plan so no i don't think there's any good rivets on this side because that rivet goes all the way through it's the same rivet that looked like the drip of solder so yeah somehow this gun is even worse than he thought it's a christmas miracle really selector lever notches nah we'll just cut those in there with a cutoff wheel from a dremel tool gunsmith some of you are gunsmiths and can already see what the problem is here those of you who are not these parts are supposed to be flush with each other. The whole point of putting in rivets is that you tighten things down together and then keep them there. These, not so much. And because they weren't able to get them very close, it appears that this top plate ended up being too thick for the rivets. So rather than fix the original real plate. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. I know I'm supposed to be looking at that awful, like just awful buck tooth gap between the, uh, the rivet heads and the receiver. Just notice this is a fucking machine gun. If you ever hear the memes and people talk about the, the third hole, that's the third pin right there. And that's, uh, that is an auto sear. This, this is a machine gun. Somebody, somebody did this to a, a crank kit that they were building as I'm sure a post dealer sample, full auto. And they built it like this. Obviously this gun wasn't inspected closely before it was first fired because well, that's where the whole horror show started. That is not the muzzle end of an AK barrel. Holy cow. Just, I, it, I literally, I have never seen anything like that. You ever wonder why God doesn't talk to us anymore? I think I'm starting to get clued in. Now, if we pull off the booster, I think, see, that's not carbon. I think someone took some sort of barrel, and I don't know exactly what kind, but it sure wasn't a proper Krinkov barrel. And they didn't even bother to drill out the holes that are supposed to be used for the two pins that hold the gas block in place. Those are just solid. Jesus Christ, so they still used a virgin crink block. Like, so that, that <clears throat> normally when you have a parts kit, it's already been demilled from a gun that was built in another country. Uh, it was cut up and imported over here and rebuild it. Uh, this was a virgin gas block front sight block combo like uh the, the crank block there you can tell because it hasn't been drilled like let me back this up real quick yeah that hasn't been drilled before that's never had pins so we call it we call it a, a virgin parts kit because it's never you know it was never penetrated i suppose so yeah the guy did not even give half of a fuck about attempting to build this the proper way he had no, he probably didn't even know how to do it to be frank he clearly didn't understand that that has to be a press fit because you know that thing is just horseshoe ringer in around the fucking barrel. I'm kind of wondering how this ever fired, to be honest, because there's not even a proper gas seal, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, you probably don't even have an, uh, if it's that fucking loose on the barrel, uh, the gas has got to escape from the gas port and go every which direction. I'm, I'm not sure, I, I genuinely don't know how this could have fired. Those are just solid. And rather than trying- And honestly, from the part that's coming up next, probably for the best that it didn't get fired a whole lot. Let's take a closer look inside. Oh, do we want to, Ian? I don't know. Bolt carrier is okay. The bolt itself is not okay. In order, I suspect, to headspace this gun, they went, went in and ground off the back of the locking lugs. That, I mean, you can see they almost took off the beginning of the first serial number digit here. That is tremendously dangerous, among other things, and like, holy cow. Who does this? Yeah, you know, no big deal. Just grind down your fucking locking lugs. They're not important. They're just keeping the explosion inside the gun and not in your face. If I had to guess why they did that, uh, there's not a lot of excuses for doing some shit like that. If I had to guess, I think they've already headspaced uh, the barrel. They've already pressed in the barrel and uh, drilled and pinned it. And then they went to go put in their bolt and realized that it was too tight. It wouldn't close or wouldn't close on a go gauge. However, like it, let's, 
I'm assuming they actually had headspace gauges, which at this point is a stretch. And in order to make it fit, instead of doing it the proper way and you know pressing the barrel back out and re-headspacing and using an oversized pin and just re-drilling, no, nah, I think they just cut down the back of their locking lugs because that's safe. Now you can lap your locking lugs sometimes to fit. That's a little bit more you know advanced, just trying to get full contact on uh, on all your surfaces when your when your bolt is going into lockup. Uh, however. <laughs> Uh, taking it to a grinding wheel is uh, probably not a good call. Thing. But we shall press on and look at the rest of the barrel. Funny, because that's the only time that barrel has ever had anything properly pressed on. Yeah, he, he said he's going to press on. It's a, it's a pun. <clears throat> I'm sorry. There we go. Let's take the handguard retainer off. Yep. Sure enough. What's supposed to be a nice little clean cutout there for the front handguard is once again ground out with some sort of Dremel or Dremel-like tool. Yeah, that's supposed to be like a precision milled uh, little cut there that was clearly again taken to a grinding wheel. Now I can be a surgeon with a grinding wheel, but that's not clearly not an example of that. In fact, the whole barrel is a bit of a mystery to me here because it's been turned down. It's still in the white, but it's clearly had lathe work on it here. And it's been turned down on a machine this far, but then it's been turned down with some sort of like angry beaver grinding tool out for the last two inches. So this is the scary part about Bubba is I believe their power is greater in numbers. Honestly, the barrel work, I mean, I've obviously seen better work uh, on that, that part that he pointed out, the lathe the part that looks like somebody actually took it to the correct machine. I've seen better barrels. It doesn't look atrocious. Clearly it was working. But then when Bubba number two got to it, I uh, probably got back, realized he fucked up the dimension or he said the wrong dimension or whatever, whatever, however this happened. I feel like we're doing a post-mortem on this damn gun. Either way, the guy gets it back and he's like, ah, oh, fuck. I, it, my, my block's not gonna fit on it. Or even worse, it could have been the right dimension and he just didn't understand the concept of press fitting. I don't fucking know. I, I really, at this point, I'm at a loss. Remember, you guys wanted this, all right? I never planned on making this video. There is a gas port in it, which appears to be indexed properly. Um, this just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, like, ah, <laughs> sorry. I'm kind of at a loss for words here. I don't know. What it, it's almost like one person started this project badly and another person finished it worse. If we look at the uh, the markings on the receiver, it is actually in 0.223 millimeter. Well, I've got the parts out. We'll take a look here. Oh, that is fucking atrocious. Uh, you can even see I, I, what appears to be where uh, whatever they were, they were using as their crushing tool for crushing the back of that rivet missed and hit the trunnion and they just smashed through the side of the trunnion. And then they just pancake that rivet uh, completely flat, which I, I mean, I guess to be fair, it, it, it it's, should be relatively solid, but it just looks heinous. Jesus. The inside of that rivet is not at all hammered down. Like the outside of that one looks okay, but that's because clearly- Okay, here, let me pause. Uh, this is a really good opportunity to show you guys what I was talking about earlier with that, uh, that long rivet. As you can see uh, on the, the two up front here, you can see they only protrude a little bit in and then the back ends are crushed flush and that's what keeps that part of the trunnion attached to the receiver. Um, the long rivet is not like that. So the long rivet, the one rivet head that uh, Ian gave them credit for, <laughs> actually that was the preformed head and uh, it just goes all the way through that area of the rear trunnion there. As you can see, it's all solid and then it goes out the other side where they, I don't know, molested it with a, with a steel hammer. Like the outside of that one looks okay, but that's because clearly, <clears throat> like when you get a rivet, uh, it comes with one side nicely domed and you put that through and then you're supposed to hammer the other side into a similar dome or press it. Uh, they put the nice one on the outside there and the crap ones on the inside. This is what they did. That one's kind of crummy at both ends. We can't really get a good view down on the inside of these. I'm genuinely curious what they use for rivets on these. Because some of these do, some of these are, they look like decent rivets, like AK Builder style rivets, or at least something close. Uh, AK Builder rivets are usually finished, so these these look pretty in the white. But the other one, I did, did like, he pretty much nailed it. It looks like a, ah, oh, damn it. He nailed it because it looks like a nail. Um, I'll shut up now. Fortunately, fortunately, like, you don't need to see more of this. 
don't really have any particularly philosophical ending for this video. Just this, this gun is literally so awful in so many ways and at so many levels that I've never, I've never seen something this bad. I've truly never seen something this bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that was bad. Um, I don't necessarily know it was the worst AK I've ever seen, uh, but it's definitely up there. It's definitely top three. I've seen some pretty heinous builds in my time, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, that, uh, that is definitely, that is top, top three. So I'll say this, if the owner of that gun is watching this video, or if anybody knows the actual owner of that poor, poor, poor AK, please get in touch with me. We will fix this gun for free. I can't save all the bad AKs out there, but I can try, damn it. Really, this is just a pretty heinous example, especially because it's built on such a nice kit. That is really a nice crank kit, especially with 545 kits becoming more and more rare. That's just a travesty. It's a, it's a, it's a great kit. You built it as an SBR, as, as a machine gun. No, legitimately, if anybody does know how to get in contact with the owner of this gun, if you would like it repaired and you haven't cast it into the fire yet, uh, please, please get in touch. Uh, we will, we will fix this gun for free. See, hopefully this story has a happy ending. Oh, all right. Anyways, guys, uh, as you can tell, I'm clearly feeling a lot better. I'm good to go, uh, ready to go for another gun meme review on Thursday. Things are trucking along. Uh, maybe when my doctor clears me, I will be able to be back in the shop and working on cool new stuff, cool new projects. And yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm glad to talk to you guys. This is proof of life. You see. See, my phone says Sunday, June 28th. So proof of life, I am still here. That was an old white claw. That was an old white claw. just sitting on my desk for like two days. Oh, nice, awesome. Anyhow guys, I guess this kind of falls in the cursed gun images category. I don't really know. I, you guys wanted to see, you guys wanted to see this video really bad. So I, uh, I, was, I, was, I was gonna say happy to do it, but I, it was mildly unpleasant. But I'm really hoping I get to fix that poor crank get her to stretch her legs again as a properly built machine gun. But before I go, if you want to head on over to the B channel, we've been uploading a lot of content from our trip down to Drive Tanks and Ox Ranch. It was fantastic. If you want to see me shoot a flamethrower and a minigun in the same video, you can head on over to the B channel. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff there. It's actually starting to take off a little bit. And finally added a profile photo too. You guys will like that. But I think that just about wraps up everything we were going to do for today. So, well, as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks guys. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put his eyes to the top. But the killer should get slow, get slow, get slow, get slow, get slow. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking about that before we lose all of our monetization. I can't talk today. Must have been those five breakfast man mosas. We got some stool, some stool. We've got some cool stuff coming up with Sportsman's Guide. Uh, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see. Ah, uh, fuck. Come on, I can do this, I promise. Got some kind of stool.